What's up, everybody? Welcome with One Fog Machine, the kind of funny games <laughs> daily for Tuesday, March 26, 2024. I'm one of your hosts, Greg Miller, alongside the luck, Roger Picorni. What a time to be alive, Greg. What a time to be alive. Why is it a time to be alive, Roger? Last night, raw. Holy <sighs> crap. Holy oh, crap. I was at the gym. Ladies and gentlemen. And when, when the rock, when the rock came out, yeah. I, I was just like, oh, oh, oh. In the gym, Fell off on the my treadmill. yeah, yeah, on my on my phone. No one else is watching Raw, and I'm just on this. Phone. Oh, oh, anyone else? No, of course, no one else is watching Raw while they're working out. They should be. They That's should how be. you get. Maybe active. they weren't at the gym because they were watching it. Exactly. You know what I mean? Maybe that was it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. smart. An excellent episode of Monday so Night Raw, ladies and gentlemen. Of course, we are less than two weeks away yeah. from WrestleMania, the granddaddy of them all. I know you've all been watching WrestleMania ranked and not unsubscribing from it. <laughs> We uh, see the numbers. Yeah, we, we see the we numbers. Know. We, we know. see the numbers. Almost over. You know, two episodes left. We'll be, you'll, you won't have anything else happening for you. Don't worry <laughs> about it. Uh, but God damn, what a good show last what an night. And, show. and again, top to bottom, right? We were talking yeah. about it there, of course, like to open with Cody Rock, right? Yeah. To end with Cody Rock. But even in the middle, I mean, to have Punk, Drew, and Seth out there fucking killing it. And then Ricochet. Like, you know, there was just so much good stuff last yeah. night. So much good stuff. Yeah. And also, just the whole CM Punk thing. Like, I'm not a CM Punk guy, but like, they're 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 really weaving these narratives. I'm yeah. like, okay, I yeah. get it. Yeah, I understand what special, man. WrestleMania yeah. is gonna be very very be special this year. I can't wait for it. Uh, but enough about wrestling, since it turns off so many people. Instead, right. tell me about video games, Roger. Yes. You've been playing a video game I was interested in, but you've been the one playing it. Tell me about it. Yeah, I've been playing this game called Yellow Taxi Goes Vroom, <laughs> which is Nailed like it. It, it. it sounds like such a fake name, and it's it is a really great game, Greg. So. Let me get you the top level of what this is. Thank you. I need is. a top level and a trailer. Thank you. Top level. Let's get the trailer. Uh, Yellow Taxi Goes Vroom is a N64 inspired platformer where uh -huh. there's no jump button. You play as a little taxi car and you uh, instead are hitting ramps in order to get higher. Uh, and yeah, that's pretty much the entire premise. There is not much. Love this art style. Yeah, they the have art for style it. is really great. It is the way I would describe it as like maximalism uh n64 <laughs> and it's also just crunchy like everything yeah, yeah, about yeah, yeah. this game just has so much the texture sharp to edges. it yeah uh so yeah i've just been in, in like n64 crazy taxi is what a lot of people have been saying online it is i would say more than that right i think it is more uh mario uh 64 than it is anything but there is crazy taxi elements of course uh it has a really good basis of what you're doing in the game right some levels you are just going around picking up uh these gears which is kind of the main collectathon right uh, element of it all but then they do have the twists on it where some levels it is like a top-down thing where you're just using the left stick to control your character and there are some levels where it is a crazy taxi thing where Pick you know, people up, drop yeah, them off exactly in order to get more time to progress through the level but you're still doing doing the main thing where you are collecting the gears and it is just so fun it, it's such a well-designed video game because every single corner has something for you to find if it's not the gears if it is not the golden bunnies if it's not coins uh so is, it's a collectathon yes, okay it is a collectathon uh that that's the main thing yeah it's a collectathon with a ton of levels this game has have you beaten them all no okay i am 10 hours into this game this game is uh I, I don't know how long it's going to be, but I feel like I'm maybe Scratching halfway through, maybe gotcha, halfway gotcha, through. Gotcha. And like, I'm like, okay, cool. I have to probably getting towards the ending 10 hours in last night. They just, they just uh, added a new element to the game, which I don't want to spoil that sure. like adds an insane, insane new level to the platforming and to getting around. So do you think it's a jump button, Greg? No, it says they it, would it never. Says the they would never. That would take away from everything about they it, Barrett. Would never, no. Don't be silly. Come on. So coming April 9th, uh, this is a Steam only game. Yes. Very interesting. Yes. Very. Yes. It interesting. would be a perfect Switch game. It would be a perfect Switch. Game. Is it a perfect deck game? Is it deck verified? Yes. You know? okay, uh, well, you I don't know if it, it's not deck verified. At least on the um, the pre-release games I, often yeah, aren't. This exactly. comes out again April 9th. There's a uh, you're, you're filing your preview slash review very early on this. I appreciate that. Yeah, but I will say <laughs> really quick. This is a really specific thing, but. Uh, they do a great job with the uh, display options, right? You know, of course, you can drop down your your display from 1080p down to 480p. Yeah. And usually when you do that, it's like, oh, it's all blurry. The way that they do it in this game, when you drop it down to 480p, it just feels like an N64 game where it is all crunchy and it feels like you're putting on a filter, but it Hell is yeah. running at 480p. Uh, so I've been playing this game, honestly, at 480p because it feels right. It feels that's, that's where it like should the, be. Way, that's what, right the way, way God intended it. Exactly. This just It feels like a game that... I would have been obsessed with as a kid. And I don't know if now in 2024, I'm 25 years old, 
I am obsessed with it now. I don't know if that's a testament to the game or just how little I've grown. Yeah, yeah exactly. But up. either way, it's an incredible game. Portland Kevin says, bring it to PlayStation with a Platinum. Of course, that'd be fantastic. But remember, as we talked about quite a lot during GDC and our Indie Mix stream, uh, they need your help to do stuff like that. Go right now to Steam. You can wish list this game. Yellow Taxi goes vroom. Uh, even if you're not going to play it on Steam, you wish list it. That helps them get eyes. It helps them sell more copies. It helps them look more attractive to uh, the third parties that could get them somewhere else there. Uh, being developed by Panic Arcade, published by those awesome guys. Two people only developed No shit, game. really. Two people only developed this game. It's really wow. incredible. Go support them. Go over there. Open up your Steam page like I did. You can toss in your wish list, and you can even get uh, the yellow uh, the ta yellow taxi goes room demo, which is available right now. Well, if you had to score it right now, what would you give it on the kind of funny scale? Four out of five. Oh, damn. For sure. Four out of Ooh, five. Damn. Real strong four out of five. Real strong four out of five. All yeah. Right. Have a well, great time. Ladies and gentlemen, that's not the only video game we're going to talk about. Let's talk about the rumor that Marvel's making its own Overwatch. Phil Spencer opening up about the hottest topics in the video game industry and so much more because this is Kind of Funny Games Daily. Each and every weekday on a variety of platforms, we run you through the nerdy video game news you need to know about. If you like that, be part of the show live with your super chats. Of course, you YouTube super chat with us. You get on the show. Of course, then you can watch us record the show live, YouTube, Twitch, and of course, podcasts around the globe. Uh, the best way to enjoy Kind of Funny Games Daily is with your Kind of Funny membership. Of course, you get each and every episode ad-free. You get all of our other shows ad-free. Of course, you get the ability to watch us record the afternoon podcast live as we record them. And you get the daily multimedia experience known as Gregway episode. I was going to say two for some reason, but it's the, the, the episode for today is an update already on my vasectomy, wow. which of course is the kind of funny podcast for today. YouTube.com slash kind of funny podcast services. Right <laughs> Just there's already an, an incredible update. thumbnail. <laughs> already, and Andy killed it. And if you can take away our picture in picture, my favorite thing is that he added a little bit to the scientific there and added sensitive because I talk at length, oh, really? I talk at length about my one sensitive testicle <laughs> yesterday on the Kind of Funny Podcast. Lots of great stuff happened on the Kind That's of Funny great. Podcast, everybody. Really and again, already an update for what's going on. Yeah. Why is Gregway a multimedia experience? Because it's, Cause it's both a video and a podcast. Oh, okay. Okay. Gotcha. And I, I kept calling it a vlog, which of course means people are like, oh, I don't want to watch it. But I'm like, oh, there's a yeah. podcast version of it too. Because yeah. I don't know if you know this, ladies and gentlemen, everything we do. Everything we do is well, the, you know, everything we do is up as a podcast and as a video, yeah. and so everything's multimedia. You get it all via Patreon ad free and all that jazz. But I just want to, or you know, membership. But specifically, Greg Way is multimedia experience. Well, again, yeah. when I called it a vlog, it was confusing. That's I'll true. take a question get, from the press pool. I well, believe that's I was, Barry Courtney from KindOfFunny.com. As uh, one of the tech people of this company, uh, we have been talking about candles, right? Of uh, people having candles at home. Where you activate it uh, have through it. the multimedia experience, where it's like, oh, like uh, we're talking about pizza today, and make the candle smell like pizza. You brought this up on a, oh like, game scent, yeah, yeah not yeah, about yeah. candles. Oh, oh what is <laughs> what's game scent is a machine that uh, does like aerosol sprays uh, when you do when you fire so a your robot eyes candle. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you th you thought I was thinking of like the skull and wick stuff from like uh, yeah, Philly casual people. Two. Yeah. Yeah. Fair enough. I understand where you're at though. Robot to, candles. I respect it. Thank you. Good handshake. I, I appreciate that. you for doing it. Uh, let's get into more housekeeping. Like I said, I'm getting clipped. I talk about the Kind of Funny Podcast. <laughs> you can get it at YouTube.com slash Kind of Funny Podcast services around the globe. Uh, next piece of housekeeping. Mike and Nick's awesome action movie nights are back featuring special guests James and Elise Willems. Join us as we head to the swamps of Florida to watch the remake of the one and only Roadhouse. Tune in this Wednesday, March 27th at 7.30 p.m. Pacific time right here on twitch.tv slash kindoffunnygames if you want to watch them watch Roadhouse, the new Roadhouse, Yeah, which I refuse to do. Why? There's one Roadhouse, all right? Oh. <laughs> we don't need to remake fucking Roadhouse. We need to watch Roadhouse again. This one's got Jake Gyllenhaal. Yeah, I know. And fighter. it's also garbage from what I hear. So what, what a surprise. I they, mean, my favorite, you, you, you know the story behind this one? What? Where when they announced, it's not in theaters, right? Yeah, it's yeah. just an Amazon movie. So when they got, <laughs> when, when they were put on, they're like, you're going to be an Amazon Prime movie. They went to Jeff Bezos, made him watch the movie. And like, can we please get a theatrical thing? He's like, I like the movie. No, it's just Amazon. <laughs> Fuck off. I love it. Jake Gyllenhaal. Come That's on, what you Jake. get for fucking over Taylor Swift. Uh, thank you to our Patreon producers, Carl Jacobs, Kieran Hova Sapien, uh, Delaney Twining. Today we're brought to you by Shady Rays, but we'll tell you about that later for now. Let's begin the show with what is and forever will be the Roper Report. <laughs> Time for some news. Six items on the Roper Report. A baker's dozen. <laughs> just a little just off. The one, just the one just fog machine. Just trying his hardest over there. You know what I mean? 
<laughs> Number one, ladies and gentlemen, we have a rumor that Marvel, that's right, Marvel Comics, you know them, Marvel Games, is making its own Overwatch. This is Paul Tassi over at Forbes. Paul Tassi, of course, master of live service games. While the hero shooter may be on somewhat shaky ground in terms of new entries these days, what if the heroes were really, really well known? That appears to be the idea behind a reportedly in-development Marvel game that will allegedly be a 6v6 Overwatch-style hero shooter, albeit in third person, not first person. I've seen a few different bits sourcing the sourcing on this now. Let me try this again. I've seen a few different bits of sourcing on this now. The latest from the streamer. And yes, I am convinced that this game is likely real. It's from NetEase, which uh, has a contract to develop Marvel games. But this is supposed to be on a larger AAA scale than its past mobile entries, Super, uh, Marvel Super War and Marvel Duel. One report says it will be on PC. Another says console and mobile as well. Known Avengers slash Suicide Squad leaker Miller Hell yeah. Miller was my man for all the Avengers stuff. Yeah. You know what I mean? I still follow him. So I see the Suicide Squad yeah. stuff. I just don't care. Yeah. But when he was data mining out Bucky and everything from Avengers, like, let's go Miller. Also confirmed uh, the existence of the game, which is supposed to be stylized in the vein of Valorant more than Overwatch designs. Miller says uh, he likes the Storm design, seemingly confirming that character and an additional streamer article says Magneto is another character and he will be voiced by James Arnold Taylor, Obi-Wan of the Clone, uh, Clone Wars animated series. Does that get us excited, Barrett? That's exciting. A hundred percent. He's lit. a great actor. Remorted, uh, reportedly, reportedly, Magneto will have environmental destruction powers. The details remain a bit murky with a few conflicting reports, but the top line, uh, a competitive Marvel hero shooter, is enough to go off of. Though I imagine more than a few players will be skeptical of NetEase's involvement here, as the company is widely known for microtransaction-heavy mobile games. And hero shooters from Overwatch to Valorant to Apex Legends are obviously laden with microtransactions at baseline. The Marvel game will have skins, at the very least, to be sure. Uh, Paul goes on for a little bit, but then has this list of characters he can confirm or says he's seen enough confirmation on. Hmm. Doctor Strange, Scarlet Witch, Iron Man, Luna Snow, Punisher, Rocket, Groot, Loki, Spider-Man, Hulk, Magic, Magneto, Mantis, Storm, Penny Parker, uh, Black Panther, Star-Lord, Namor, and Thor. Wow. Roger. James Arnold Taylor, also the voice of Ratchet, by the way. Uh, oh. Oh. Roger. Hi. Hey, how are you? Good. Happy to be here with you. Thanks. It always too. does me well. Do we need to come up with a better nickname than the lock for you? Because we just yeah. stole that from the WWE game we, you didn't play. Yeah, and it is also the generic name. <laughs> Wasn't yeah. it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, we can, we have to figure out something better. I used to call you New York's finest, but you kept saying, no, I that's do that. not. I don't like no, that one. No, <laughs> I didn't like that no. one. And then who framed Roger Picorni that one that's time? Remember a little that? long, yeah. We'll keep working on yeah, it. We'll Anyways, uh, does a Marvel shooter 6v6 game do anything for you? Yes. Oh. But. Oh. Netties, like I, you know what I mean. Like it's from what I'm seeing here, it's like it seems like they're getting a lot more budgets. It seems like this is gonna be like their big swing in a big AAA game. But I don't know. When you see the repertoire of games, when you look at the website, it's like yeah, there's a bunch of mobile games that have a bunch of microtransactions. Like yeah. I don't, I don't know if they got the stuff. I don't know necessarily if this is going to be the thing that's like, hey, oh my god, we actually did an Overwatch Marvel game and it's good. Um, mm, it's just like from reading all this, I, I'm excited by the amount of characters, but then also sure. the amount of characters is like. How is balancing going to work? You know what I mean? This company that doesn't necessarily do uh, c competitive shooters, like, are they? Are, is Magneto going to be completely broken? Like, I just start going down that rabbit hole immediately. Chat, I want to know from you, super chat with me with your thoughts about a 6v6 Marvel shooter game. I can't envision it, mm. which doesn't mean it, and it can't work. It's more the fact of, like, as somebody who does not like Overwatch, who just doesn't want to be drawn to that kind of game, but does want to be drawn to a Marvel game, you always get to that, and we'll talk about it later. Can it do what DC Universe Online did and bring me into a genre I don't normally play, right? Mm. I didn't play MMOs before DC uh, UO, and that's what sucked me into be there. But then again, you've seen it with fighting games where it's like, no, I don't want that. I do like shooting in games, so this is... If I'm doing interesting things here, I guess, but again, a team-based 6v6, like... How are we working rounds? And I'm a d dork, so what's the narrative we're wrapping around why all the heroes and villains uh, are teaming okay. up? That's you know? what you, that's what you're focused on. You're focused on like how are they gonna explain it? It's this? like how are you going to sell it to me? Yeah. Somebody who wants to like a new Marvel game, wants to, you know, find a new genre or something like that. But if it is just protect the payload, right? And moving that back and forth, yeah. Okay. Like I, don't, I mean, like I guess one of my turnoffs too in Overwatch or something is jumping into all right, you have to be a hero and they all are like 
I don't know any of these people. I don't care. I like the cheat code of being, oh, like Punisher. I know what Punisher is probably going to play. Like Spider-Man. I know what Spider-Man. But then even that, Spider-Man and a shooter. Yeah. So is it just webbing? Or is there any melee? How does yeah. that work? What is, is he, like? he going to be jumping around? Is he going to be swinging it all? Like, yeah. That's, I, I look at this and I'm, I'm just, I'm slightly optimistic. I think that there is something here. I think there's absolutely something here with the, the idea of having a 6v6 <clears throat> uh, Valorant-like game with characters you know. Uh, and I just... I'm just still hung up on the fact that it's like, I don't know if these are the guys to do it. Yeah, I don't know. We'll have to wait and see, I guess. Yeah. Uh, obviously, no release date tease, nothing like that. This is just coming through. Oh, Barrett's got something to say. Uh, no, I just uh, put up a poll in both uh, the Twitch and YouTube chats for, uh, would you be excited for an Overwatch-like Marvel game? Mm. Uh, right now, 78% on Twitch say no, and 66% oh. on YouTube say no. Wow. Kuma Babams in the super chat says a six v six Marvel shooter game. How about we just bring back Marvel heroes instead? Yes. Yeah. One thousand percent. Yeah. Marvel heroes taken from this earth too soon. It was one of those things like I I played a little bit and I was like I like this a lot and then I forgot about it and I was like let me play it again. It's like it was gone. Yeah, <laughs> I was like gone. okay, well, totally erased from that. Gone. Just okay. Wiped shit. off Fuck. the map from that. That fucking it. sucks. Or whatever. Um, yeah. And so that thing is like yeah, yeah you know. The best I can hope for is, yes, I will see this and go, shit, I want to play that. Or, I can see you doing it. I can yeah? see you getting down the rabbit hole. I just I just feel it's it. It's like, I look it's, at this, and it's like, who would I mean, though? Again, I, I and I know I'm just so, so stupid yeah. that I'm just thinking in a box of Spider-Man in a shooter. Yeah. So what is that? Somebody made the joke that it'll be like Suicide Squad. He'll have a gun or whatever, right? So it's like, yeah. he won't, obviously. But yeah. like... <laughs> It could be cool. Yeah. I, could ju I just I just feel like you would, if you find your right game, which I think this could potentially be it if it's good, yeah. I think you would you would go down the rabbit hole. I think you could become, I could see you as a healer. I could see you hanging out in the back, oh, see, helping people out. I was thinking out. tank, so like, I yeah. was thinking Penny Parker. No, I just... Well, then I'd be Hulk. I feel like Greg likes yeah, helping people. You know what I mean? You're just in the back, you're helping people, you're making sure people are revived. I don't know. Okay, I just get those enough. vibes from you, Greg. I, I, I don't, you know, I, I usually don't play a healer. I usually am DPS and these kind of things, but, but I can, I can I'm, feel I'm, it. I mean, again... Spider-Man's healing. He's webbing everybody. I'll be, I'll be drawn in by whoever you know these people are and what they are and what they can do. I guess you know what I mean. Who is? Because I look at this, I'm like, who's going to be the healer? Luna Snow. Luna Snow. Uh, the article I pulled this from at Forbes mentioned that she was uh, from the mobile games. Oh. She's from I think Strike Force Chat. Kind of funny. Dot com slash. You're wrong if that's and, right. An OC. Uh, huh. An OC. An original character. Yeah, that's right. That's what I do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, Cross Vale says, I'm calling it right now. Greg won't care about this game if it comes out. Uh, Luna Snow is over here. Uh, character first appeared in War of the Realms New Agents of Atlas, number one, May 2019. Uh, uh, well, hold on. But see there, concept and creation. She first appeared as an original character in the video game Marvel Future Fight in 2018. Wow. I think she started there and then went to the comics from there. One thing I noticed from here, no Wolverine. Yeah, again, this isn't an official announcement. Yeah, yeah. So you look at this, and there, I, I would say it's a it's a big list. Not to mention, like, yeah, what what like guess what? It's tomorrow that the Joker DLC's out for oh, Suicide boy, really? Squad. I think right. <laughs> it's this, maybe the twenty eighth. Oh shit! Gotta find that com slash you're wrong on that one for me. Like, if you're doing this type of game, the gotcha, the microtransactions, the whatever is the promise of more. Interesting. My so brain I, goes to the Insomniac game. Do they just have an exclusive rights to Wolverine? Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. Because thought, you see Magneto, you see other X-Men characters. Yeah, but here. wasn't, remember the leaked documents through all the hack and all that bullshit? I thought you couldn't make like another, well, I, you know, I'm actually so rusty on it. I, can't, I shouldn't even mention. Yeah. There was something in there where I think he couldn't be the main character, but I think he can, he be, can be a character. Okay. I think. Interesting. Kind of slash wrong. Remember something like that. That's not the thing for me. I would think it's more like. That's a, get yeah. it, you know, if what I mean, when is this game coming out? But tease it up and have it be on the season pass, the battle pass, the whatever, the first expansion. Yeah. Because you are getting a good mix here of Avengers yeah. and X-Men, which is cool. Yeah. I was kind of, I, I mean, I don't know if this is all launch stuff. Of course, this is all speculation or whatever. But like, I, this to me is like, wow, this is a lot of characters here to launch with or at least to start off with. I mean, for so, a for a leak. Rumor, yeah. For a leak slash rumor, whatever this is. I don't know. For sources reporting, that's a lot of lists. Yeah. That's pretty awesome to get through all this. Cool. Mm, cool. Mm. cool. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. We'll see. Yeah. We'll see. Yeah, I know. I wish we had more to go off of, but we'll see how long it takes till NetEase opens their mouth to tell us what the <laughs> hell this is. Instead, we'll move on to number two. Speaking of opening your mouth, Greg Way, Whoa. Phil Spencer's open wide and Whoa. he's spilling the goods. <laughs> uh, Chris Plant over at Polygon had an article with Phil over at uh, GDC, and it's it's a 
It is a required reading. Go to Polygon. Read this in its entirety. It is uh, deep. There's a lot of great stuff in there. I'm actually going to use the cliff notes that I pulled from GameSpot, where they pulled out three different sections from it. So this is all from Chris Plant's article at Polygon. Go click on it. Go read it. All that jazz over there. But uh, I'll be telling you, like, for this first part, let's talk about what he said about layoffs. This comes from Eddie at GameSpot. Barrett. Link in the in the description below. <clears throat> Thank you very much. Microsoft Gaming CEO Phil Spencer has defended and explained Microsoft's recent decision to lay off 1,900 people from the Xbox division. He told Polygon that Xbox is a business, and like many other businesses, Spencer's job is to make profits. Sometimes that means laying people off now to grow in the future, he said. Quote, I don't get any luxury of not having to run a profit... Yeah, okay. I don't get any luxury of not having to run a profitable growing business inside of Microsoft. And we are that today. But just across the industry, I reflect on friends of mine in the industry that have been displaced and lost their jobs and how just, I don't want this industry to be a place where people can't, with confidence, build a career, he said. <clears throat> Spencer went on to say, uh, the video game industry is projected to be smaller in 2025 in terms of players and dollars spent. Big publicly traded companies need to make moves that give investors confidence that profits are coming and that can mean cutting jobs to get there. <clears throat> Quote, you get a lot of publicly traded companies that are in the industry that have to show their investors growth because why else does somebody own a share of someone's stock if it's not going to grow? The side of the business that then gets scrutinized is the cost side because it's not, I'm sorry, because if you're not going to grow the revenue side, then the cost side becomes challenged, he said. Layoffs at Xbox are, quote, really an outcome of an industry that's not growing, end quote, Spencer said. He went on to say he does see better days ahead. Quote, it can grow and it will grow again, but you see this time right now and the implications have human impact and we should all reflect on that and think about it. End quote. He said, hmm. basically a really long way of Phil saying, you're right, Greg, everything yeah. you've been saying about all this is right. That's you what know he what said, I mean? Yeah. 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 That's what he said. What's your takeaway though? Um, not wrong. Like everything he's saying is, I think on the money in terms of like, if if the if the industry is not is not growing right now, of course he is working inside of Microsoft, yeah. right? He has to work for Microsoft. He has to work for the stockholders, and the stockholders always want to see that infinite counter of everything going up, 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 up. Yeah. yeah so yeah. that is what the where the industry is at, and yeah, I I don't think there's I don't think there's anything crazy here in terms of what he's saying. There's nothing crazy, but what I have always appreciate, and I think that gets lost a lot, is speaking in plain English. Yeah. So many times we get these CEO statements that are word salads, uh, you know, blah, 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 like the trying to come off emotional when that's not what's happening here. And so for Phil Spencer, I think one of the most open executives in the industry, right, and definitely one of the most well known, yeah. to come out and just lay it out black and white, like this is what's happening. And yeah. yeah, that sucks. There's this human impact to it, as we all know, and that's not Phil reveling right in the 1900 jobs he had to lose at Xbox, but it is the reality of like. This is what's happening and why it's happening and where we're going to hopefully get to a better place. Yeah. Like that isn't comforting to the people who've lost their jobs. That isn't comforting to the people entering the job market who are worried. That isn't comforting to anybody who wants to just talk shit about capitalism, which there's plenty of reasons to talk shit about capitalism. That's not what I'm saying. But it is that idea of like, I appreciate him being like, yo, this is what's happening and why. And yeah. for him to actually be to the like, you know, I am the CEO. I don't have the luxury of not doing this. Like, I think so many people would want him to hem and haw and be more your friend right yeah. you know what i mean i feel like phil gets put in that role a lot where he's got to be business you know at the top when he's doing business but so much talk he does he's a dude in the t-shirt and a bomber jacket yeah where i think here to have him actually sit out in nuts and bolts this is what's happening why you don't have to like it you but you have to understand that's what the realities of the video game industry are right now and i think is again we see layoffs time and time again and i feel like we've been a good job done a good job of hey, here's why this is happening, and that doesn't make it right, and that doesn't make it cool. And again, these are bets people shouldn't have made and growth people maybe shouldn't have jumped out on. It's nice to see someone with a larger platform say to the audience, this is why it's happening. Yeah, and explaining it, as you said, in plain English, but also, I think, remembering and, and reminding everybody that he works within Microsoft. He is not... Yeah, he, he has a head, boss. Yeah, he is the head He is the head dog of Xbox, but Xbox is a smaller part of Microsoft in the grand scheme of things. Mm -hmm. Um yeah, I, I, I do appreciate him talking about this in, in such just real, like if people don't listen to KFGD and they, they're just wondering, hey, why are these jobs being lost? Video, game, and, video games are huge. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. And him him explaining it. I mean, yeah, it's interesting to see that 2025, he sees it as as a year that's going to be smaller when in 
in a lot of ways, video games are going to get bigger in 2025 with Nintendo Switch 2 and um, GTA 6. But, I mean, that's where the industry is going for sure. Barry, you got something to say? Uh, my only challenge for uh, all of this is when he talks about uh, this is the outcome of, of an industry that's not growing. I would say that it, it, it is growing. It has uh, been growing, but it's not as um, exponential like it was when everybody was at home playing uh, video games. And so th that's the only part where I'm like, you, you can't really say it's not growing because we, we, we see the profit margins. We, we see what uh, games are doing when they are successes. Um, I don't know. That just feels like a weird thing to say, when, especially when we, a lot of the reasoning for laying people off is so that the, um, the shareholders can feel like it's 2021 again or some shit. So, yeah, just felt weird about that one. Chat's popping off saying console sales aren't growing. Revenue is. And I think, again, that comes back to what they're looking for, right? We talk a lot uh, last year at the beginning of the economic headwinds, right? And I think that's where it gets a little confusing because I don't think there's one stat you can point to in the video game industry to say, all is well and good, right? You're looking at multiple different things. And again, to for Xbox, you're looking at a corporation that's admittedly and publicly talking about being in third place in terms of being hardware, right? And yeah. what their first parties are doing and yet da 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 that there's so much going on. I saw it go through... Uh, Somebody said earlier of like, I wonder why he thinks 2025 is going to be a slow year, right? And I think it is the fact that what we've all, what you're looking at this year and seeing everything catch up, right? Where we had that bottleneck of COVID that then led to last year having game of the year after game of the year, month after month, week after week. And now you're into a spot where it's like, okay, cool. We're on the other side of a whole bunch of reviews we just did with Dragon's Dogma 2. And it's like, it's quiet for a second. Yeah. And there's still games coming out. I can't wait for open roads, yada, yada, yada. But like, it's still not the can't wait for the next game of the year contender and then even last yesterday we talked on games daily about okay gta 6 might be in uh, falling behind on development so if that's not a 2025 game anymore that's gonna be a huge blow for the overall revenue of video games yeah. in 2025 yeah and he's also the xbox ceo the head of xbox so it's yeah. like what's xbox's next year looking like you know what i mean like i, I think it's all kind of skewed with what xbox's future is mm -hmm. looking like so that's a great point yeah, yeah. He's, he's saying video games but he's coming from the xbox perspective exactly uh, let's move on to the next point I pulled from this one. Uh, on an Xbox handheld, this is Evan mm. Campbell at GameSpot reporting again on Chris Plant's great article at Polygon. Uh, blah, blah, blah. For starters, Phil Spencer wants to wants current... For starters, F Spencer wants current PC handhelds, specifically naming the Le, Le, <laughs> Leveno, Le, no, Lenovo, Lenovo, God, it took me forever, Legion Go, quote, to feel like an Xbox. The Xbox head honcho said he bought the device, with, brought him the device to GDC, and he's annoyed his save file doesn't appear on Legion Go with Fallout 76 because there isn't cross save. <laughs> quote, I want to be able to boot into the Xbox app in a full screen, but in a compact mode, Spencer said. Quote, and all of my social experience is there. Like, I want to feel like that, the dash of my Xbox when I turn on the television, except I want it on those devices. Uh, then they're adding, like the Legion Go or the Asus Raj Ally. Spencer admitted the Xbox team is exploring, quote, different hardware form factors and things that they could do, end quote. This also comes on the heels of a new report that X Microsoft is working on an Xbox handheld prototype. Uh, the device would apparently be fully native instead of just being cloud-based for gaming experiences. In addition, Spencer has said uh, years and years ago that his team designed Xbox handhelds behind closed doors. If Microsoft does actually bring an Xbox handheld to market, Spencer seems to imply his team will continue supporting other PC handhelds as well. Quote, like if I want to go to my con like if I want to go play my console games on the go with a handheld, I don't want to only be able to buy one brand of handheld, right? I want everything that uh, that we're doing in the hardware space to be great. But if somebody chooses to go play today somewhere else, I don't want them to feel like it's a lesser Xbox experience. He explained. Interesting. Yeah, I am a huge proponent of Xbox making a handheld. Uh, I am somebody who believes that Xbox should be doing a Windows handheld of some of some kind where Xbox games are on Windows and I feel like Windows should have an Xbox launcher of some sort. I think in reality what it's probably going to be is a Series S that's just handheld Fuck yeah. and they just Fuck call yeah. it that and that's the simplest way to go about it in my gamer pc brain i'm like i would love if it can dual boot i can i would love if we're able to have that and then also be like hey i can also you know play all my steam games yeah, as well yeah, yeah. like that would be the perfect competitor to a steam deck if you can be like hey i can play all my xbox games plus i can play all my steam games like 
that would be the perfect combination. But in reality, I think it's just going to be a series. Do you X. think it'll actually happen? Do you think they'll actually get it out? I feel like, you know, the more we talk, whenever we talk about Xbox, we talk about them lagging behind in hardware. Yeah. Is there really their next move going to be to do that? And I think yeah. if it was, I think your chance of dual booting actually makes a lot of sense where I think they would tackle that of like, yo, we have to set ourselves apart and this could be a way to get people in to actually be more on the Xbox side. Yeah, especially if the Series S is even right now, we're feeling it. We're, we're feeling yeah, that yeah, we're yeah. feeling the RAM limitations and maybe the handheld would be a little bit more expanded if it were to come out in the next few years. But yeah, I I think that it's going to happen eventually. Okay. It seems like they are putting their eggs in enough of the handheld baskets. And of course, they could just be like, oh, we're going to co-sponsor all these these handhelds. But even Phil himself is saying, like, I'm not happy with it. These aren't I'm, the right experiences. Yeah, exactly. Because yeah. yeah. you can put uh, uh, the uh, Raj Ally has the Xbox stamp on it, but it's not a true Xbox experience. And yeah. I, there's something there. There's something there for Xbox and uh, handheld. I, I think that would be... I'll be fascinated. I, I would... I. Obviously, you have somebody who remote plays every night with his PlayStation yeah. Portal and loves that experience. And for the most part, it's fine. It was that you know trip to New York where I was like, all right, I guess toss the Switch in the bag. I don't know what I want to play on this. And of course, in classic fashion, it was nothing. I played nothing. Yeah, <laughs> you know, of course. I slept on the plane, watched a movie or whatever the hell I did. Uh, I would love a console on the go. Like when I went to Canada last year and I brought the X screen on my Series S to review Cyberpunk, right? Like that was an awesome experience. Clunky because I'm like shoved in a thing, but it was nice to have ready to go on its own. So I'm, I love handhelds and I love the idea of the success of the Switch, the success now of the Steam Deck, inspiring Xbox, inspiring PlayStation to try to tackle that in their own way. But I just feel like I don't see Xbox doing it because I feel like Xbox is already lagging behind in hardware sales. So to make another platform that I don't think is going to set the world on fire, I, I would get it, and it would actually, I think, for third parties, inspire me to maybe go that way. I don't see them getting into that. And also, I think we're in such a weird spot right now where cloud gaming and remote play is, is good enough. Mm. And so you really do worry slash wonder of like, when the next thing of internet gets here you know what i mean when the next 7g whatever when we're getting fucking wi-fi beamed at us at all the time you know what i mean like yeah. what the next 10 years of internet connectivity is going to look like do you still worry about wanting a dedicated handheld when you have these experiences that are good enough yeah i i think so i think you still want a dedicated handheld because there's always going to be times when you don't have the internet sure. you don't have the connection to the internet you want at the very least uh and I understand the point of like, hey, Xbox is lagging behind in the console space right now, but like, imagine if they were able to take a lot of the stuff that they have and reformat it and put it into a handheld thing. I think that is a lot that is a lot easier of a sell yeah. than, uh, hey, you have a box in your living room. Hey, now you can carry this around. Now you can move. Oh, house has windows on it. Like, there is there is a value proposition there that I don't think is there necessarily for just a console. And I I see as somebody like. If, if I was a lapsed Xbox fan or like, hey, you can bring this around anywhere. You can plug it into your TV. You can just do anything with it. I would see that as being a, a, a better choice for Xbox going forward. And maybe, I don't know. I, don't, I think they're always going to have the console box in your living room. But I mean, what if it was a Switch? What if it was a Switch-like thing? See, I guess that's the other cool. thing too is I just don't know if you always will have the console box in your living room. Mm. I, th I know, I, you know I've lived through the death of console gaming a few times mm. already. So I'm not saying that's where we're at. But as the Steam Deck does proliferate as pc gaming becomes more and more accepted right and you know more and more mainstream in a way i think it hasn't been not ever i mean even for as popular as pc gaming's always been but to the point of like you know my friends who have kids want pcs like you know what i mean that's something they do want they understand they're growing up with and i think it is that conversation of and i think it's gonna a little bit dip into what we're talking about in this next breakout from it but the idea that like people I, I've seen articles and reports and commentary about like why would these younger generations want to spend five hundred dollars on a box when they already have the t PC, the laptop, or whatever, and they know they could play stuff there. Yeah. And that really does become the thing of ease of use and and having as few barriers to entry as possible, right? You know, I mean, I can equate it to my own desire for everything to be streaming. And uh, when that happened, you know, I got a, rid of my physical collections. I, I never wanted them to begin with. Now everything is just in the cloud or on a, you know, device or whatever. You go back and take that mentality to just gaming in general. I don't know the argument. You know what I mean? Like, you know, the, the character of Greg's argument is always the plug and play ease, ease of uh, a console, right? Yeah. 
obviously PCs have come so far in doing that 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 really isn't an issue. You can buy a rack PC and be fine, right? But then if you want the this, that, and the other, you really want to spend the energy and the minutiae to get in there, that's a different conversation. But something like the Steam Deck, like you're talking about, where yeah. it can be, just plug it in and it's on your TV. Yeah. And if they were able to do that with an Xbox, that would be exciting and that would be great for me. I would like that. But again, I wonder if there's actually investment in it. I would love PlayStation to talk about what they're seeing with the PlayStation Portal. Yeah. Like, has that been a success? Like, <laughs> it, it, it was a... yeah. A launch that I loved. I use mine nightly. I adore it, but I don't hear about it. No. I don't hear people talking about the portal, that they use it, they don't like it. I don't see people saying they want it. I also don't see people saying they regret it if they got it. So it's this real weird black hole of what the, uh, the information is in there. Yeah. And I going back really quick to the Xbox thing, I, I think the biggest at least push for me of like why they would want to have a Windows box is because Steam Deck is a Trojan horse for Linux, right? Like sure. you have a Linux computer on a Steam Deck and also Google is going up there in terms of like actually having market value with when it comes to laptops with Chromebooks, right? Because kids are just getting sure. Chromebooks all the time. So I could totally see Xbox just becoming like, hey, we're just Windows now. We're the, we're we're working together. We're gonna be one and the same. You get an Xbox console, you get Windows as well. I don't know. I to me that would be the perfect. That's always been the dream as a kid. I was like, man, man, imagine my Xbox and actually, you know, I could tell my mom, hey, I'm I'm doing my homework on my Xbox. Like, how cool would that be? You fucking dork. I know, right? I'm just such a fucking nerd. But I don't know. I thought that I think that'd be cool. I think that'd be cool. Final last bullet point from this uh, Chris Plant article at Polygon, but pulled from Eddie over at uh, GameSpot. Let's talk about Gen Z versus Whoa. exclusives. Microsoft recently announced plans to bring some of its games to PlayStation and Switch. And this decision was seemingly based on part of its research about Gen Z habits. Uh, Spencer told Polygon that young people want everything everywhere, and Xbox is adapting to that. Quote, this notion that Xbox can only be this one device that plugs into a television isn't something we see in the Gen Z research because nothing else is like that for them. Some of them will have an iPhone. Some of them will have an Android, but all the games and everything is still the same. Uh, I can still get to TikTok on both of them, uh, at least for now. That's funny. Uh, all of their stuff is available wherever they want. So for Xbox, our brand pivot as we attract and maintain relevance with a younger audience is, quote, Xbox is a place where I can find gr the great games I want to, end quote. The announcement that games like Pentiment, Grounded, Hi-Fi Rush, and Sea of Thieves would leap to PlayStation and Switch generated a good amount of discussion and debate. For his part, Spencer said this decision is, quote, for the better of Xbox. I know sometimes things get weaponized, and there's some evil in the background that's making us do things. Phil hates exclusives, and that's why uh, we're like PlayStation's... That's why we, we're we like PlayStation Switch now. Every decision we make uh, is to make Xbox stronger in the long run, he said. It doesn't mean everyone's going to agree with every decision we make, but it is fundamental for how we make decisions. Yeah, he's right. And this is what we're back to, right? Again, like, the continued gamble of Xbox and their, you know early move to cloud their early move to game pass their early move to xbox games are everywhere and it will be interesting if that pays off and if it does how does that pay off because again if it does cool we're out of the hardware business and we are just a third-party publisher great i mean that's that's uh, definitely a way but how does that net out for then yeah gen z yeah as a gen zer i will say it's all works for me you everything everything i'm a gen zer i'm a gen zer who so what's the generation beneath, beneath you then millennials Eight. No, oh, I'm a millennial. Yeah, yeah. Oh. No, when you're saying like the younger kids? Yeah, who's young? What, what Gen you Alpha. I think they restarted. Ah, Jesus fucking yeah, Christ. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So now they're using I was Greek 99. Letters? I was 99. Right there. Right there. But I mean, I am a huge proponent of like the Xbox cloud ecosystem 100%. and everything yeah. they're doing. Like, I mean, even back in the day when I was a kid, I always wanted something that would just be like, okay, I can just play my games anywhere. I was one of like the first like on live people oh, back, nice. yeah i like i got my mom to subscribe to it and everything she had oh, no idea man. what the fuck i was doing but Mrs. i was having Bacorny, a great time you're a saint. <laughs> yeah, she really is <laughs> she's the best but yeah no this this i don't i can't speak for the all of gen z but i'm the only gen z you're here so phil spencer you're right i mean you're i think he's right too it's gonna it's right. just an interesting thing of again when you're future proofing what do you do in the in the short term where sure. it is like oh, i'd love a handheld that did this do you go make that handheld or do you try to make your streaming slash partnership slash whatever better so it works best on all those things yeah. barrett uh greg you and i both being uh millennials someone was asking we're like well what about the the millennial habits well we're all gonna die soon so <laughs> yeah. we don't matter That'd be great, it's, it's just roger and his kin that matter now. you guys can sit here and fight <laughs> over the can of beans at the fire after the fallout i like beans 
don't like you. Oh, beans are gross. Beans are Ladies great. and gentlemen, what I like is your support. Uh, if you love Kind of Funny Games Daily, of course, we need your help. If you got that Kind of Funny membership, you'd support an 11-person independent operation in San Francisco. And, of course, you get each and every episode of Games Daily ad-free. You get all the other shows ad-free. You get the ability to watch the other shows of the podcast in the afternoon live as we record them. And, of course... You get the multimedia experience Greg way each and every day only with the kind of funny membership. But guess what, Jack? You're not using your kind of funny membership benefits. So here's a word from our sponsor. This episode is brought to you by Shady Rays, an independent sunglasses brand that has over 300,000 five-star reviews. They are on a mission to match affordability with durability, making top quality shades accessible to Everyone. They have tons of styles and colors to pick from, so finding the perfect polarized shades is a breeze. Get ready for a whole new level of clarity with Shady Rays Pro Polarized Lenses. Here at Kind of Funny, we all love wearing our Shady Rays. Whether it is Tim looking dope doing his Pokemon Go walks or Joey just looking fantastic in her Tangle Free Shades. If your shades go MIA or take a hit, don't sweat it. They've got lost and broken protection so you never have to worry. You're covered from day one. And if you don't love your shades, exchange or return them for free within 30 days exclusively for y'all shady rays is giving out their best deal of the season head to shadyrays.com and use the code kf20 for 20 dollars off each pair of polarized sunglasses try for yourself the shades rated five stars by over 300,000 people and you can bet your bottom dollar we are back Wow. Ladies, gentlemen, and NBs. Number three on the Roper Report. The PS5 is getting an automatic game clip feature that helps other players. This is Tom Warren at The Verge. Sony is introducing a new community game help feature on the PlayStation 5 later this year that is designed to automatically create clips that can help other players. PS5 players will be able to automatically upload gameplay to help contribute to hint videos provided by game developers. The opt-in experience will let your PS5 automatically capture a game clip when you complete an activity in supported titles. Quote, then it will be reviewed by a moderator, and if approved, your game video will be published as Game Help Hint for PlayStation players to watch, learn from, and rate, uh, explains the Senior Director of Product Management. Uh, PS5 players will be able to use the clips to help complete trophies or find hidden items in a game instead of having to head to YouTube and scan through videos to help find it. Uh, These uh, new community clips will build on top of Sony's existing Game Help section that includes access to hints, tips, and walkthrough videos from developers. The video clips will be removed from a PlayStation 5 console once they're uploaded to Sony's servers, and if the clip is approved and published, you'll get a notification on your PS5 that your gameplay is now published as a game help hint. No audio from a webcam, microphone, or party chat will be included in the clips. There will be a published video section where you can remove any clips. Quote, community game help will start to become available in select games later this year, and our goal is to expand it to as many titles as possible in the future. I'm excited for this to not be as supported as the uh, as the other game help. Where See, my thought excellent. is this might be. This sounds like them finally fixing to sure. a degree of game help. Yeah. How supported will it be? You never know. Yeah, exactly. It's always the game that I want, I need it for, and it's just never there. It's just like, nope. Okay, go to the thing. Okay, well, that's not helpful. So, I mean, in that sense, so it's ex- cool. to explain that, if you yeah. haven't used it on PS5, right? There's cards and there's little help things, and so. In theory, when they announced it and you knew it would be supported that way, it was the idea that if you were stuck, you could open this thing and it would tell you how to go do it. Yeah. And then, of course, very like outside of launch games, there's been a handful of games that have actually supported that. Yeah. And oftentimes it's not what you need. It's something else entirely easier, right? Yeah. Like it's like any other in-game hint system that just isn't helpful. Yeah. This is interesting. And I love the idea of it. But I don't, again, I don't know how it works in terms of I'm playing a game and I want to get this trophy and it's like do so on the trophy will I hit a button that says game help and then it's going to show me the clip of the person doing yeah, it and if, and if so that's great that's if awesome I'm lost will figure out where I am and then figure out exactly what I'm doing is there like, a what do I do next yeah and button? also the moderator thing it's just like feels like this just seems like what an poor, invest what poor bastard at PlayStation <laughs> sorting through all these fucking <laughs> terrible clips of like yeah it, doing. Just, it just feels like I, I don't know I'm not I don't think this is going to last very long. <laughs> it's a good idea. It is. It I is. mean, in terms of something they have to keep chasing. Again, it's like... It's the value for PS Plus. It's also a PS Plus thing that you have to subscribe for. It's just such a weird thing of like, you know, again, trying to... 
it, it reminds me in so many ways of PlayStation when it was trying to be the multimedia center, when it was where the one box you need, yada, it's like, is game help so broken? Like, you know what I mean? Like, I understand you don't want people leaving. You, anytime another screen distracts somebody from the game they're playing, that's a problem for PlayStation. Yeah. But again, until I see this actually working and working flawlessly, I won't believe it. And again, to add it here at the end, right? It'll be available in select games later this year. <laughs> Our goal is to expand it to as many titles as possible. So this isn't even in AI or tool set you're layering on top of it that makes it super easy and it's going to go, right? This sounds like something AI should be doing. Of, yeah. It's the one I'm feeding. It, it's going through millions of clips of how to pop this trophy and it picks the best one and puts it there and there's the button to go for yeah. it. Yeah. I feel like at that point they just need to do the Xbox Snap thing where you can have the game oh, here yeah. and then just God, YouTube. Xbox Snap, so good. It was so good and yeah. then they just removed it. Yeah. They needed yeah. the RAM. They needed the RAM. Yeah. Uh, it'll be interesting. I don't think I IGN guides are in any trouble just yet, but... I'm I'm excited to see them experiment with it. I'm always down to see something you know, cool and whatever. We'll see. <laughs> whatever. I was going to see something cool though. Number four, uh, V Rising has a legacy of Castlevania teaser trailer. Let's check it out, Barrett. The Sunlock Studios V Rising, ladies and gentlemen. It's V Rising. I'll tell you all about it once we watch this trailer. <laughs> Got some animatics here, some vampires. There he is, Velma. Oh! The Rising Legacy of Castlevania. Play a son battle, battle, Simon. Battle, Simon Belma. Oh, because we're the. V we're the V, yeah. So if you don't know, what is V Rising? You said, survive as a newly awakened vampire in a world ruled by humans and rise to become the next Dracula. Feed on blood to gain new powers, hide from the scorching sun, and engage in real-time PvE and PvP combat set in a dark fantasy realm. Uh, raise your castle and invite your friends to join as you explore a vast open world, pillage villages, skirmish with bandits, and delve into the layers of supernatural beasts. Attack other players' castles or become a diplomat in a game of blood, power and betrayal v rising's uh may 8th launch will follow its fantastic early access period on pc with more than 3.9 million copies sold uh and sitting on an impressive 88 percent positive reviews on steam wow uh the full blood-soaked launch sees a confident sun stunlock studios release a game that is highly refined having built a loyal and enthusiastic community of blood suckers along the way <laughs> So, uh, yeah, it's uh, coming out of Early Access on May 8th. That is okay. also when the Legacy of Castlevania stuff is coming. That is just PC. Uh, PS5 is coming sometime later this year. Okay. I love the pitch of it. Yeah. And I, I've heard a lot about V Rising. I have not played it, but it sounds like a game I'd love yeah. to play. It sounds like a game. All I want of that into. sounds good to me. I had no, I thought this was like an older game that they added in the Quinn. I didn't realize it's like a new game that's coming out out, out yeah. of Early Access. Okay, cool. uh, the Mighty Hero of the Belmont Clam, si Simon, Clan, not Clam. Simon Belmont is here to challenge all of the vampire kind, wielding his legendary vampire killer and an infamous arsenal of holy weaponry. No Night Stalker will be safe from his righteous crusade. Defeat him and unlock the secrets of a brand new weapon, the whip, uh, adapting new combat abilities that embody the grace and precision of the deadly vampire hunter. I don't want to kill Belmont. Really? No, I don't want to do that. He's a good guy. You got to, but you're a vampire. Fuck. And you want to rule by right. diplomacy, maybe. You're right, shit. I'm going to go on, but Barrett, I do. Can I see gameplay of V Rising? Yeah. I don't think I've ever seen V Rising gameplay. Because this game sounds cool. It does. But is it cool? You what don't do you want to watch the, the trailer again? No. <laughs> the animatic? No, no. That, that, that told me what I needed to know about it. Now I want to know what I but like did this it, game. Did it tell you? Yes. Simon Belmont's there. I'm going to kill him. Okay. Yeah. It's isometric, one. people are saying. I'm that sounds great. Up. I'm just talking to you. It's Diablo with Power here. World slash and Shroud. It says Herbie. Fuck yeah. Wait, what? You're selling me on this. I just wow. fucking this garbage oh. of it being far away. Oh, oh it's is, this game. Is there is there crafting? Do I got a craft? Why is that vampire out in the sun? <laughs> <laughs> He's burning oh, there. Okay, burning. okay, okay. That's a that's immersion. Uh, uh, oh, wow. You're there. building and shit. Okay. Uh, I mean, I, I guess making, making my Leia. My Leia. Sounds cool. But if it's not, if I because yeah, this doesn't seem like Mikey and Andy survival they, they, game they'll run you through on the on a stream. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Play with people. You gonna do something that. or you just ride horses and fucking build? <laughs> you gonna kill somebody? You gonna be a fucking vampire at some point in this I mean, game? Oh, here we oh, are. Here we are. Suck here this guy. There we go. Up, suck this guy off right now. Wow. There we go. Wait, did you? What did you say? I said suck this guy off. Yeah. Okay. I'm using that right, right? Yeah, That's yeah, how yeah. millennials use it. Sure. Huh. Bought a big tree, a walking tree. Okay. Lord of the Rings. Dropkick Tondo says the issue is uh, the grind is a lot. So, oh. 
Hmm. Hmm. We'll stay tuned, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Really? Being a tank team. <laughs> well, I mean, May 8th is just around the corner. So it's like, I gotta, I gotta wait long to find out if people like it or not. Uh, number five on the Roper Report Sonic Heroes could be getting a remake for Nintendo Switch's successor. We did this it. is a report from George Yang at GameSpot. A remake of Sonic Heroes is reportedly being considered at Sega. The game was first released on 2000, in 2003 uh, for PC, PS2, Nintendo GameCube, and the original Xbox. According to Universo Nintendo, uh, the Sonic Heroes remake would be built with Unreal Engine and be put on all modern platforms, uh, including the Switch's successor. Sega would reportedly aim for a 2025 release. Prominent Atlas and Sega leaker uh, named Midori originally corroborated uh, Universo Nintendo's report. However, they later clarified that Sega was only considering the possibility of a remake. They also added uh, that they were unsure about the possibility of this remake being released within the next three years. Throughout Sonic the Hedgehog's long history, Sonic Heroes is one of the very few games in the series that has not been remastered or brought to any other modern platform. Uh, it's not even available on Steam. In GameSpot's Sonic Heroes review, we said Sonic Heroes is the closest that Team Sonic has ever gotten to doing a 3D Sonic uh, the Hedgehog game in the classic 2D fashion. What's most disappointing is that the problems in Sonic Heroes, which include the camera, the controls, and the clipping, <laughs> are the kinds that would uh, could be remedied with a few extra months of fine-tuning. You popped uh, off for this. You ready? Uh, you excited? I played it as a kid. This was like my only connection to Sonic other than Shadow the Hedgehog. I used to okay. play with my Aunt Randy all the time. Uh, yeah, I, I, I'm very weirdly nostalgic for this game, especially Team Chaotix, which gave me like this weird skewed view of Sonic in general because I thought that these guys were like the guys. These He's the guys, This fucking man. alligator. Like I thought this alligator was the dude, but sure. he wasn't. No, he wasn't um, But yeah, it's cool. It's a little weird that they're not because like in that, um, uh, the Persona leaker, he said that, they're, they said that they're not doing a Sonic Adventures yeah. uh, remake, which is like, weird that they, they wouldn't do that one first but they're doing sonic heroes but like we'll see that is like the weird i don't understand what they're doing there but hey I'm, i think cool. i think that's what was said for the entirety of sonic that nobody knows what they're doing there yeah Why are they doing that? what's going on Just over throw there a dart at the board get sonic going because he's gotta Unreal go fast Engine. and eat yeah. a chili dog roger yes we've had a good show full of big news but if i wanted something smaller say the tiniest news i needed to know about where would i go you go to our last story the we news channel where we cover all the small news items you need to know about Weeks you up, you know? <laughs> I love it. The whole show should be like, it's got a good li li thing to it. All right, ladies and gentlemen, last story, We News. Uh, your first piece is huge news. DC Universe Online is available right now on PS5. The PS5 native client. A no shadow longer drop? Having, no longer, yes, it's a shadow drop that was supposed to be here at the holidays. <laughs> no longer do you have to boot through the PS4 version. Uh, the Xbox version is on its way soon, they say. Uh, also, episode 47, uh, Brainiac Returns, is coming in May, and episode 48 is coming in September. Episode. Uh, there's an, yeah, that's how they do their DLC now, their expansions. Uh, okay. Uh, new Switch firmware is out as well. IGN reports that update version 18.0.0 adds 15 minutes as an option for the auto sleep when playing on TV, adds Korean as a supported language for parental for the parental introduction control videos, and that old chestnut system stability improvements. And then finally, Chucklefish is bringing Wild Frost to mobile on April 11th. <clears throat> Not too bad, right? Yeah. On top of that, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we've partnered with NVIDIA to keep you updated on all the latest GeForce RTX editions to your favorite games like launching today is Outpost Infinity Siege, a new survival, exploration, and base building shooter that comes with DLSS3 frame generation, super resolu resolution, and reflex. GeForce 40 series users can enjoy a crazy 3.3 times performance multiplayer, uh, which comes in handy when you're reclaiming the planet from robot hordes. The next one, a big one for me. There's a new patch for Diablo 4 out today. This adds ray traced effects, including reflections and shadows, uh, to Sanctuary. This perfect mood lighting for a, a, bit, a bit of demon slang, don't you think? And of course, the game is already accelerated with DLSS 3 frame generation and reflex. GeForce 40 series can get up to 3x performance increase. We want everyone to come join us. Kind of funny tomorrow when we'll be checking out these dark atmospherics for ourselves on stream. Fun. I'm returning to Diablo. Oh, I'm you very are? excited. Yes. Very excited to get some Diablo in tomorrow. And then finally, let's talk about 
Horizon Forbidden West. Uh, you may have seen over the weekend the incredible visuals offered up in Horizon Forbidden West Complete Edition. The game launched last week with DLSS 3 frame generation, DLSS 2 super resolution, and NVIDIA Reflex. Those AI-enhanced boosts are a perfect match for experiencing the best graphics this game has to offer. At 4K resolution, completely maxed out, 40 series GeForce gamers get double the frame rates. Thanks to DLSS 3. Ooh. What a gorgeous game. Yeah. Pretty. Roger. Yes. We asked people to use the YouTube Super Chats to be oh. part of the show. We already had a bunch uh, come through and talk about them, but here's some of the ones we haven't gotten to yet. Uh, Mara pops in to say, Friends Per Second released a great preview of Judas along with an interview with Ken Levine. Highly recommend everyone checking that out. Cool. I would accept Lucy James. Uh, you know what shit. I mean? Lots of Judas previews went up while we were going live. Uh, we'll have a roundup for you tomorrow. Um, Portland Kevin says, congrats to Greg on taking the responsibility of birth control. Good on you, man. You're welcome. Thank you. Um, you know what I mean? You're welcome. You're welcome. I, You're thought welcome I, would only, I thought I would only sire one heir and unleash him on you. It could have been many more, Raj. I could have I done been whatever I wanted. More. Barrett? Could have, been, could have been more. Could have been a lot more, Barrett. Thank God. Ninja Two Knight says, just wanted to drop in and say I met Felicia Day over the weekend and we talked about kind of funny and how Greg is crazy. Uh -huh. Love you guys. Uh, now I got to get back to work. We love you, Ninja. Get back to work and shout out to Felicia. Yeah. You know what I mean? She still plays games with Gary a lot. Yeah. I, I don't know if Gary's alive anymore. Yeah, where is he? You know what I mean? Mike, I think Mike's been doing something on a weekend at Bernie's Remember one time we were like, him. where is he? And then he just, he added somebody to our, yeah. <laughs> to our PlayStation. Yeah, Dong Liquor or whatever. <laughs> and I was like, who is that? He's like, oh, that's my brother-in-law. <laughs> oh, is it? Yeah. Okay. Aaron Made You Laugh says, great show. Please read these MGS Closer to Live. There's nothing else other than that. <laughs> so I don't know what the fuck you're trying to say, Aaron, but I hope you're okay. Sure. If you smell toast, you're having a stroke, all right? Dial 911 and then hit send, all right? That's what you need to do right now. Okay. Alvaro says, Greg, Beyonder put heroes and villains on Battle Planet again, and now they must battle on teams to survive. Oh. Okay. I'll see if that's if that actually is true. We'll get there eventually. Uh, we have some people suggesting new names for you. Oh, yeah. Uh, Flash says, Roger, the horny, the corny. Gotten that so many times. Can't it's not do bad. It. It's, it's not, not, not bad. It's not, it's not yeah, bad. Yeah, yeah. It's not bad. It takes you a different way. Yeah, it takes you a different way. Uh, it's not good. Bander SN says, Roger, the Premier Pro. Oh. Corny. I like that. I like he that. He wants to shove it but into your last but name. you don't use Premier. Uh, sometimes. I did it half and half. I'm like, yeah, Da uh, DaVinci. Use DaVinci. Yeah, oh, really? Yeah, I go back and forth. I saw. Uh, uh, keep on going. Yeah, I don't know. No, what's no, going. no. This uh, is, uh, the, the Roger Ally. I like that. The Raj Ally. Oh, I didn't see that. That's not in here. I've been calling you that for a little Or, or I, yeah. I'd call the Raj Ally the Raj Ally. Yeah, I like it's that. It's supposed to be Rog, but no. It's no, it's, no, Raj. it's Raj. It's Raj. It's Raj. Yeah. It's Raj. Uh, and then our final one comes from Cozy Bear, who says, What if the Marvel 6v6 shooter is a competitive bartending game and you're competing to make the best shooters using your superpowered abilities? It's dumb. Dumb. I'm allergic to bad bad questions. That's one of them. So you're gonna to, give your money back. Gonna that sneeze. Sucks. I'm not giving the money back. Oh shit. I'm not doing that. Don't Fuck. worry about it. Uh, we also ask you, ladies and gentlemen, watching live, to keep us honest by going to kindoffunny.com slash you're wrong and tell us what we screw up as we screw it up. Uh Tundra Boy says, Greg said he hadn't ever seen V Rising gameplay, but he reacted to the gameplay during the PlayStation State of Play <laughs> in January. Well, again, let's all be honest. That looked pretty fucking generic. You know what I mean? So is it hard that, to believe that I couldn't remember that? You know? I would love if the reaction was like, this is the greatest game of all time. I'm so excited for this. Come back to it. I'm <laughs> going to it right now. Uh, AK then wrote in and said, according to Matt Piscatella, their most optimistic models have gaming revenue for 2024 shrinking by 2%, implying the industry is not growing overall. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen. That's another episode of Kind of Funny Games Daily in the books. But don't fret. You have three more weekdays, which means three more episodes. Remember, the best way to consume those episodes is with your Kind of Funny membership. If you head over to Patreon or YouTube, you can get each and every episode of Kind of Funny Games Daily ad-free. You get all the other shows ad-free. You can watch us record our afternoon podcasts live as we record them. And, of course, you could get the daily multimedia experience known as Greg Way. That is just rocking people left and right. They can't believe what they're seeing out there. <laughs> Remind me when we're off air to tell you where my brain went and I had to grab myself. Yeah, I'm so I was like, excited. no, don't do that. I'm That's so Greg, come back over here. Yeah, That's working not... on the smell of vision. 
We're the working robot, on the smell robot vision. candles. We're robot working candles. on the smell vision. <laughs> robot candles. Uh, of course, if you have no bucks to toss our way, no big deal. YouTube.com slash kind of funny games podcast services around the globe. No matter where you get the show, please like, subscribe, share, follow, uh, and tell your friends about it. Of course, we will continue streaming some video games. Uh, YouTube.com slash kind of funny games, twitch.tv slash kind of funny games. We're usually pretty much always live. So check us out. Subscribe there. And until next time, no, it's been our pleasure to serve you.